Warcry Blood Hunt. No need to beat around the bush. Let's get to it. Let's shake, rattle, and paint. So after we did like a Zenithal Prime, these are all the paints that we're going to use. We're just going to chuck them all in a pile and see really where we can go from this. As for the Zenithal Prime, I hit the Chaos Black from Citadel and then went over it with a Panther or Panzer Grey from Vallejo. And then really only like 50% coverage with a Bestial Brown from Vallejo and very minimal coverage at the end with a Flesh Tone one also from Vallejo. Uh, this is kind of like a way of cheating around not having an airbrush and when we come in here I'm putting in uh, washes. I want to give a lot of color and life to this even though this is like the dead land of the beasts. So at the base I'm focusing on the uh, Drakenshoff Nightshade. That's exactly how it's pronounced. And up at the top is the Karaberg Crimson. It's probably a total, totally normal pronunciation for that. But I'm not even going to try anymore. And then blending them kind of in in the middle, I'm going to hit with this Athonian Camo Shade. Hit it kind of in the red and let it run its way down into the blue. Blend all those together. There we go. Really good places for this to just grab and run straight down. The last step of it is on the tips of the branches themselves. I'm going to take that Karaberg Crimson, cover all the ends of the leaves. You know, they got a lot of that highlight from the flesh tone um, rattle can or spray paint. So we're going to coat all those, give it a nice, nice, even overcoat. Now here's something, I really love Contrast Wildwood, uh, but it is extremely dark. And if I put it on there by itself, it would cover up all the work that we just did. So this is roughly two parts contrast wildwood and three parts uh, technical medium, contrast medium. Uh, mix up more than you think you're going to use because uh, I very, very often run into the fact that I'm on the very end of it and I run out. So we're going to cover the whole thing from bottom to top. Nice, even coats. Uh, now we're really trying to make sure that we're not letting anything pool because now is when we're going to really start getting into that um, color. And here we go. On to the dry brushing. We're going to start off up at the top and we're going to use just like a bright yellow. Work this one down. This is like an oxide yellow. Hit all the high points. It's going to be very reminiscent of the colors that we use here as to the colors that we used for the shade, shades underneath. Yellow going to be the only slight exception to it. And as we continue to work through, we're also going to come in and use Leaf Bud Green. Really focus on those areas that the light's going to hit, what would have the most life to it. So once again, like this piece here, I just wanted to have life bursting through this like part of death big skull at the base if I just made it a black and gray tree I think it would just been a little bit too boring and blend in with the, the terrain and the last one is we're gonna take a lava orange and work that up through it after all that is done what's happening right here is I'm taking some administratum gray and I've mixed in a couple different um, shades of it with screaming skull really hit the back of that you notice that I'm completely avoiding at this point the underside that's covered up by the little platform. That I really do want to show dark shadow, like th there is some death involved with this. So as I go through this, I'm going to keep on hitting the high points. Um, I'm actually going to do a couple different layers of it and periodically I'll just add in a little bit more Screaming Skull. There really is no mixing ratio that I used on this one. It was just by eye, mixed it all up on the wet palette, added a little bit more where I thought it needed it, balanced it back and forth. Here we're getting to almost the really bright stages. So the idea I had on this one was a cherry blossom. Uh, again, I just didn't want to do a white, black, and gray, so that's why I added in all those base colors underneath. 
at a distance you might lose a little bit of it but once you start coming in you really start reading through in all the cracks and crevices they just read like shadows until you get up in there here's with all the dry brushing done as we move on to the skull I spent a couple years painting up Legion of Nagash, Soap Like Grave Lords, so I've done one, maybe 4,238 different skulls and bones. This is one of my favorite methods. It is pretty time consuming at the end, but I really do think it's worth it on a big, big bone piece like this. Right here is an ashen brown. Really water it down because you see there's a lot of like pseudo uh, zenithal on this. There's a lot of dry brushing that hit it. I want that you want that to be seen through it so really thin down the ash and brown on this part and you're not going to completely coat it you're going to leave the deep recesses and you're going to leave the parts inside let them be the way that they are there we go. really okay now we're going to come in for the second coat this is also just ash and brown but what we're going to do is we're not going to go as far back as we did on the second one Still keep it pretty thinned out. Keep it really smooth, broad strokes at this point. And this is just making sure that you have that solid coverage. But when you're in that those deep recesses, you get those blacks and those grays, and all those are gonna kind of like blend it right in. Now is where we start mixing it in with Screaming Skull. Uh, you'll see how many layers I did. I couldn't tell you the mixing ratio on this. I only used Ashen Brown and Screaming Skull to go do the entire skull on this. Uh, so I just added in little bit by little bit. And you really start to just systematically whittle down how much you're covering with it. And since this is such a big piece, I added in small amounts of Screaming Skull each time. And what this did is just added a very smooth blend at the end. You still get a stark contrast from those really deep recesses to the very high edges, but getting there is very gradual and natural steps. This is my favorite method of doing it. Here, coming in with another layer, adding a little bit more Screaming Skull, and starting to narrow down the amount that we're picking out. Now is when our brush strokes are gonna get a lot more precise, a lot thinner, you'll probably have to do the same area with more than one pass when you start to get these very thin strokes to make sure you get the even coverage that you're looking for. Pick out now all those little raised areas, but really making sure that you're leaving those deeper recesses. Here we go, we're just gonna keep on building this up. So one of the final ones here, we're getting pretty close to done with the skull. A little bit more of the Screaming Skull added in. Now there's very little ash and brown in there. As we get to the end of it, we're going to have our final layer is going to be just Screaming Skull. I could be tricking myself right now, but I believe this is that final layer. And you see how small we're getting on this. Very thin strokes, just on the very high edges. Yeah, even those long parts of those long raised edges, they're not all getting it. Just to add to that smooth transition, that's the benefit of doing so many layers. Here we're just finishing up, showing a quick view of the other side, what that part of the skull looks like. And the next step is going to be to black out all the teeth and the horns. I skipped through that step from showing you on this. I don't think that's that exciting. But here I'm going to do a very quicker version of what I did on the skull. So this is a mix of the ashen brown and screaming skull with just a little bit more ashen brown on it. Hash our way down. Add in a little bit more screaming skull and this is going to be the final layer on the teeth and the horns. But we're kind of doing a reverse of before. Now as we get over to the bamboo platform, never painted bamboo before, so I was really, really nervous about doing this, especially using a wash right now, where I had just done all that work. So this is that Anathonian camo shade again, and honestly when I was done with this, part of me wanted to stop. I said that's a great bamboo color, but 
but every time I looked up references, the bamboo was dead, dried out, like a yellow and tan. So if you want to stop here, this is actually a perfectly fine place to stop after you get this. Uh, with all those different colors from the um, spray paints coming through, I think it worked out great. So as we come up now, we're going to get back into the ashen brown. And we're going to do like a 85-90% coat coverage on this. This is probably more of like 90-90 plus coverage. Virtually all of it. But this is very thin. Now we're mixing in some tan earth. So this is a mix, uh, pretty much a 50-50 mix of the ashen brown and tan earth. As we're wrapping this up, we're going to come back one that is just... 100% tan earth and each time not quite as meticulous as the skull we're gonna work it down just a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more here we go this is that one that's just tan earth and I feel like at this point here is where that true worn uh, dried out bamboo color was coming from and this here is a 50 50 mix of the oxide yellow and tan earth real thin trying to do steady small strokes on this and the final one pure oxide yellow used a much smaller detail brush now and the only difference too is i only did the tops of the platform i didn't do any of the supports nothing else just did it direct and there's small thin lines on each one just right there in the middle we're at the final steps now. Uh, this part here, I really didn't know how it was going to go. I don't do foliage that often, and I don't do tree flockage, flocking that often. And I especially don't do it on armature like this. So it's just straight PVA white glue. Uh, I've seen a lot of people recommend using tacky glue. I just didn't have any on hand. I didn't have time to go get it. And this is Huge Miniatures Loose Foliage Cherry Blossom. I love the monk aesthetic of the vampires in this kit, so I wanted to carry the Japanese cherry blossom then over onto it. What I don't show is spraying on a mixture of PVA glue, water, and a varnish, and adding in a couple more layers to that after all. And this is the final result. I love it. I love it. I'm so in love. I really can't wait to finish off this kit. I just really hope that I'm able to do the rest of them with the same level that I did this, this one or higher. I think all the bamboo in here is going to test my patience, but hopefully at the end of the month, we'll be ready for it. Alright, Abuchananas! Don't leave just yet. If you like what you saw, like, subscribe, share. Really appreciate it. Just getting started off. This is my fourth video. I'm going to try and do a video every Tuesday. First Tuesday of the month, do a review. And the last Thursday of the month, do a terrain. Uh, whether I'm crafting or painting or building a board or an encounter. Uh, I'm on Insta or, yes, Instagram and TikTok. On Instagram, abuchinanas underscore tabletop. Over on the old TikTokies, I'm at abuchinanas underscore nomeo dilbo. Because why not? <laughs> All right. I do one to two videos a day over on TikTok. Uh, a lot of what you see here is going to be on there, plus a lot of short little clips thrown in and just a lot of stuff for fun. So check it out. Hey, share it around. Ah, Puchinadas.